Hello everyone, welcome back to Birch Shop. So today I want to talk a uh, real quick talk about something that I get asked all the time whenever I make power hammers and uh, release a new video. I get the question quite often. I get it both at locally and online and through YouTube uh, quite often. And the question is, should you buy or build your own power hammer? Which one is most cost effective for you to do? So my answer to that, uh, sorry, I got the hood up, put that down there. It's kind of cold in the shop here. So my answer to whether you should buy or build a power hammer is based upon two simple principles, okay? One, do you have the time? Do you have the money? Now, so we'll be real frank here. If you have a lot of money, but you don't have a lot of time, you should buy one. Building a power hammer takes a lot of time. It, it does. It takes a lot of time. It takes you in ways that you would never expect. I mean, look at my shop, for example. The place is an absolute mess. Uh, it takes up time in your life and things of that nature. So if you have a lot of money, but you don't have a lot of time, I would suggest you buy one. It's just a lot easier. And then you get to do the real thing that you're wanting a power hammer for in the first place, which is to beat on some steel. You want to take and move the metal. Uh, so efficiency wise, it's probably more efficient to buy a power hammer that's already pre-manufactured by somebody than uh, to build your own. Now, if you have a lot of time and money, I suggest building one just like that. Uh, no power hammer build, you'll see things where people say, built power hammer for under $50. That was that day. Uh, you know, an electric motor is going to cost you, you know, a couple hundred bones if you're getting a good one. If you get one from like Harbor Freight or something like that, where it's not a ball door, you know, it's not a name brand, it's a chintzy model. Um, you know, you're looking at a hundred, you're looking at, you're still looking at about 150 bucks uh, for a motor that's going to do what you need to do. That's not including the wiring to that motor. They don't come with wiring. You're going to spend probably an additional 50, 60 bucks there. Uh, so guys who put out these things like, oh, I built this hammer for only $100 or cheapest hammer ever, those are kind of flashy titles, but don't get deceived by that because they, it does take money to build your own power hammer. Now, the second part of that where the time comes into it is should you buy plans? And this is where I come in. This is how I support the channel is making plans for power hammers like the one that I just built here. It's the way I support the channel, but this is not cheap to me. So this power hammer here has cost me approximately with all the excess bolts and parts I'm not going to use and scratching my head and coming to engineering challenges and things of that nature. This thing's probably cost me in the tune of around $1,400. So that's how much effort and energy I've put into it. It's taken me about two months in total because I haven't been able to work at it constantly. Uh, I cut the lumber from it, everything's new on it, new bolts and fittings and motors and everything's new so that way I could get a price list. With plans, you should be able to build this hammer for right around, depending on what steel you have on hand already, if you're buying everything new, it's going to be right around $800, 8850 um, And that's just the price of a hammer. You're going to have to pay something to play the game. And that's, that's not taking into effect all the tooling you see here in my shop that has helped me to build this hammer. And, and you know, the toolbox in there, there's probably $400 worth of tools in there, mechanics, toolbox, just of, you know, wrenches and things. Not that you can't get it done cheaper. Most of you guys probably already have that in your own shop. But it's something to take into consideration whenever you're wanting to take and build a hammer. This is why sometimes buying a hammer can be just as economical as building one. Some guys think, hey, I'll just build a hammer, it'll be cheaper. But what's your time worth? You know, if you could spend that same amount of time making product, you could have just bought the hammer instead. So, I like to be as authentic as I can. I think it's kind of my life mission to be an authentic person. 
Uh, it's something to consider when you're considering purchasing either one of my power hammer plans to build, especially once I get the plans up on the site for this one. It's something that you want to take and consider for yourself. Now, you may be a guy that, you know, you're retired, or maybe you're just doing it as a hobby and it's just fun. You're just doing it for a kick. Uh, at that point, cost doesn't really matter at that point. Time doesn't really matter. You're just doing it for fun. Uh, if you're trying to do it as a business or aspirations for that, it's going to matter. You're going to have to kind of weigh out the costs one way or the other. Uh, if you're being cheap, if you're trying to just do something on the cheap and you're hoping a homemade hammer, I'd really steer you away from trying to make a homemade hammer uh, because they're not cheap. Uh, they're not cheap to build. It's a misconception that they're cheap to build. Like this right here, this press. I move this over here. I know we're talking about power hammers, but I'm going to point out this press as soon as I can get this off here. Sorry. All right, my shop's a mess. My teeth have been bugging me, so I need to do my housekeeping here. But this press right here originally started as a C-frame press. And I thought, hey, I was given a control valve for free. I was given a cylinder, like a ram. It's behind this copper plate for free. Uh, and I was given a pump, a hydraulic pump for free. And I said, hey, that's all I need for a, for a press. I'll just take and go down to the scrapyard, buy me some I-beam, which was about 600 bucks. Went down, bought me some I-beam. The hoses cost me $800, just in the hoses. It, it was, it blew my mind, you know. And so you look at presses that cost right around $4,000 or 4,800 bucks, and you start thinking to yourself, it, you know, you're like, oh man, that's just, whoa, that's a lot. That's somebody else building it. That somebody else's welding wire, somebody else's engineering that's went into it uh, in trial and error. So just think about that for a second. This press here, it started as a C-frame. I built it too lightweight and I ended up having problems. In fact, at one point, and this is why I'm leery about doing a press build for people, at one point, uh, the hydraulic cylinder, it was a downwards pressing press, popped off and hit me right on the shoulder. It, it broke loose one of my welds up at the top. I, you know, not paying attention, you know, it was a learning experience. That hurt me real, real bad. It could have killed me. But that's one of those learning points that, you know, I had to learn on that. So there again, you think, well, I'll be able to build, build my own shop press for 800 bucks. Yeah, yeah, you, you may, but then again, you might not be here with us among the living either within a week or two after using your own $800 press. So what did the cost of this come out to? The cost of this came out to about $2,800. After it's all said and done, all the screw-ups, I, uh, I ended up destroying a hydraulic pump, had to go get a new hydraulic pump. I ended up blowing up a hose, had to get another hose, had to put up put in more money, found out that my the whole problem was my uh, single action solenoid valve here. Yeah, it was it was shot that a D10 setting wasn't right and, and it was plugged and it wasn't working so I had to buy a new one of those. Uh, so I ended up having to get everything new anyhow and it was about $2,800. But these are the things you learn. Now I have had very expensive mistakes and things that I've learned that way but that's something that you guys don't have to take and do. So consider all these things when you're considering whether you're purchasing or building a power hammer, a press, or any sort of tooling. Uh, also, here's another big one. We'll just go into this. This will be a, a little rant and then I'll be done. I know this video has been going on long enough. You've just been watching my talking head and oodling the hammer here in the background. My last little rant here is... I get this all the time, guys over engineering things. And what I mean by that is there is always those few that say, well, I can do it better. I can do it better. I can do it better. Yes, you could. There's always room for improvement. But at what cost is that going to be to you? There's been several guys that have made my hammers now. I've seen pictures. Some of them didn't put as much time as I put into my original uh power hammer the revisited design and you know and it shows it doesn't hit as hard as what mine did uh, there wasn't as much attention to detail they changed some things that they thought was going to make it better and it didn't really make it better 
Now there's other guys that they've really went all out and they've made this like machined, perfect, beautiful piece of equipment, but taken to the fact, I built my hammer in four and a half hours. I built my hammer in four and a half hours and I had about $75 into it above and beyond the scrap material I had laying around. These guys have done spend 600 bones building the hammer and, and making it this beautiful piece of, of equipment. And once again, it hammers just as good as mine, as, as my original design did. So when you're buying plans for something, I challenge you to try to do it exactly to spec on the plans first and decide whether you like the hammer or not and then upgrade your improvements from there. That way you don't have to re-engineer the whole thing because you can over-engineer something to the whole point where you will not build it to begin with. You won't start at square one because you've already thought past 10-15 steps and now you're really just kind of creating your own hammer. Um, and at that point, then you have all the thinking and the head scratching to have to do to figure it out. Now, this works for some people, and that's okay. But if I make plans, like I said, I've got about twelve to $1,400 into this hammer right now. Uh, and, you know, and that's, that's, a lot, that, that's a lot of money into that hammer of trial and error. So I make plans to try to save you guys. Uh, that problem of having the trial and error of, you know, having all the trial and error pieces. I have a whole box of fittings here, a whole box of bolts that I can't return that I bought because I thought I was going a certain route. I didn't. I bought them in bulk. There you go. So you may not have that problem, but I, but I did. I just want everybody to learn from some of my experiences so this way it can really help you all out out there. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, I will have plans for this available up on the site as soon as I do some testing and I make sure, once again, I've got to test it. I got to make sure everything that I'm putting in the plans is going to hold up to the abuse and rigors of forging. If it doesn't hold up, I change. I change it out. I'll pull something out, put something in, and then, you know, uh, see how that works. So it's going to be a few weeks of testing. Mouth still sore. We'll figure that all out. Um, and but I just want to encourage you to do a little bit of thinking before you purchase plans, either for this hammer or somebody else's plans for their hammers, and decide whether it's really right for you or not. And I like to be as open and honest and authentic as that. Of course, I'd love for you to buy a $3.99 plan from me. Uh, and help support the channel, but don't feel obligated if it's not right for you. So, God bless everyone out there. Thank you all so much for watching this video and me ramble on. I appreciate everyone so much. Thank you to all my loyal subscribers out there. We're getting close to 10,000 subs, and we are going to be giving away a little hammer at the 10,000 uh, sub giveaway. So, uh, I'm really looking forward to that, and thank you for all the new subscribers that have subscribed. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video. God bless you all. And like I always say, we'll catch you on the next one.